Hi folks, welcome back and thanks for joining. Today we're going to make casein gesso. Now this is a uh, sort of a primer that uh, artists will use for their canvas uh, to seal it so that uh, the paint doesn't uh, bleed or apply unevenly and it's uh, quite typical. Now what got me on the path of this was in a previous video we made a sustainable embossing powder that we've dubbed Lisart. Now this gesso would work uh, as a primer also for the embossing powder if you wanted to use it on paper or cloth or canvas or something like that. So that's what we're going to do. Now here at Geo Sustainable we like to make things from 100% sustainable materials. So No plaster, no talc. What we're going to use is cornstarch. And what we're going to end up with is a very nice, now this is a bit curly because I let it free dry uh, without tension. And as an artist, you would want to, your canvas is taut, so. But it's flexible, it does not crack. And this would be an ideal primer for the artist. All right, so what we're going to need to do this is we're going to need some milk and some cornstarch. Now we're going to use vinegar to precipitate the casein from the milk. We're going to separate that and we're going to mix some cornstarch with it and uh, we're going to uh, make that. Now once again sustainable materials means that critters may be attracted so we're going to use a few drops of thymol from a product called Listerine. All right. What we're going to end up with also is a nice, thick, creamy gesso. Now you can make it as thin as you like, but I like the gel. All right, so let's get started. And here's a look at what we're going to end up with at the end of this. Very nice, milky, creamy looking gel that stays on the brush very nicely. Now it's a bit translucent now but it will dry a solid white. So let's get rolling. And in this video I'm going to use the casein powder. This is a bodybuilder supplement. And we're going to treat it exactly the same way as we would skim milk. We're going to put in only a half a cup here because um, a little casein just so goes a long way. Now that was a half a cup and we don't really need to measure the water. But what you will want to do is to make it the consistency of milk. And if it's too thin, that's fine too. Uh, a little thick would be problematic. So more watery is better. And it mixes in warm water very quickly. And now we're going to start piping in the vinegar and you will see the identical reaction as if I were using skim milk. Now warm is better. You don't want to get this above 40 C cold will take much longer. So if you see that the reaction is not as dramatic as you would like, you can pop this into the microwave for a few seconds, 10-15 second bursts. Until you get it to where you want.
and just a gentle stir and you will see the casein precipitate out of the water. And just to illustrate, my water is just a little bit cold, so I'm going to pop this into the microwave and warm it up a bit. And that was uh, 45 seconds in the microwave, and there we have it. I'm going to pipe in just a little bit more vinegar. Now it's hard to go wrong on the amount of vinegar unless you don't use enough. If you don't use enough, you're going to waste your milk or your casein powder and it's going to not precipitate out. But as you can see how it is completely separated. And we have small chunks and that's ideal. And what we're going to use to recover this is our usual strainer and for this we're going to want a, uh, a cheesecloth and we're going to let that drain and then we're going to rinse this with some cold water and I will be back all right it is filtrated out I rinsed it with uh, some cold water but I noticed there's this little bit of the casein sticking to the sides of the cheesecloth and uh, you've seen me do this before we're going to use just a little bit of water to wash down the sides just a little bit just to make it easier for us to recover and you can continue to do this until you've completely washed it down so that what you end up with is a cottage cheese consistency for the casein and that's that's ideal if it is a um, if it's gooey and sticky we'll just drive off a little bit more of the water until you get it to the uh, consistency of cottage cheese all right and you can recover what's left on the cheesecloth just like this it just pulls right off and there's that now here's what we want right here crumbly and to this we're going to add our cornstarch and then we're going to add more water and we're going to pop this into the microwave to cook it just a little bit we want equal amounts of cornstarch we're going to pop in one half cup cornstarch and again the amount of water is really not important because this is where you're going to determine the consistency that you want I'm going to start with one cup of water so now we're going to combine everything together there's our casein here's our cornstarch we're just going to pop that in we're going to pour in a cup of water And we're going to add our thymol. Six, eight, ten drops. Not too much. And now we're going to start mixing. And once we incorporate these fairly well, we're going to warm it back up into the microwave. We're going to give it uh, 30 seconds at a time. 
Now, if you cook it too much, what's going to happen is that the cornstarch is going to clump together, and that's going to require you to mix in a blender for a good long time to get rid of those lumps. So, slow heating and not too hot. Lots of mixing, and we'll be back. So after a few uh, cycles in the microwave, it, uh, it has warmed up to a, a bit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to mix it together for about an hour uh, just to get out all these lumps, as you can see. On low. So that after an hour or so of mixing and slowly heating, what you're going to end up with is a nice creamy solution. And we're going to let this set overnight so that it can gel up even more. All right, so now that it's sat overnight, it has firmed up into a nice gel. Now there's one more step for this, and that is what we're going to do is we're going to screen this. Uh, and the, the reason for that is so that we can uh, screen out any uh, solid particles that may not have uh, dissolved or cooked in. and uh, I'm just going to use just a, uh, a little uh, dish towel here just to show you. You can use cheesecloth. Uh, it might even be uh, preferable. I think the, um, and uh, this is an important step. If not, when you use this, there may be little uh, bumps and lumps. And there we have it. A finished casing gesso. Now what I've done ahead of time is uh, to demonstrate a little bit. I don't have a canvas, but what I did have was a uh, an old t-shirt that I managed to cut up and stretch over this plate. And I've applied this and it has dried. Very nice white. A couple of bumps here that we could sand off. And this is one coat. Quite often, uh, artists will uh, apply two coats, and that works too. All right, so there we have it. A casein gesso made with 100% sustainable ingredients. Suitable for use on paper, on any pore surface, on canvas, And uh, as you see, you can use this as a primer for uh, the casein embossing powder that we made in a previous video. And what we've used is milk, vinegar, cornstarch, and of course a little bit of thymol to keep the critters away. Now this is acrylic paint. So give this a try. And uh, perhaps you will uh, make a video instructing me and uh, give me an art lesson. <laughs> and if you like this channel, well, there's going to be a green ball to replace this in just a moment. And it'll take you to my main channel 
where you'll see other videos on subjects related to arts and crafts, uh, sustainable living, things like this. So um, click there, check me out, and if you like, subscribe. And I want to thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye now.